Hi everyone, my name is Chantal Klaas and I'm going to be giving you an introduction to the microbiome and its study design in this module. I will also speak to the popular term 16S and why everyone seems to be so interested in it. The primary outcome of this module would be for you to be able to describe the importance of the microbiome and why it should be studied. So we'll be defining the term microbiome as well as other related terminology. We'll touch on the current hypotheses around the ways we may be acquiring our microbes, how it may change due to lifetime exposure, and how these microbial profiles may be similar or vary between individuals. We'll also touch on how different body sites may have unique microbiomes, and that even a single body site may harbor different profiles. We'll talk about the importance of knowing what microbial communities we host as humans and what their impacts are on our health. So basically, why we want to study them. And all of this ties into the exciting world of what is widely referred to as 16S. I have decided to do a couple of recordings on this topic by splitting it into different parts. In part 2.1, I'll be touching on the human microbiome and the different hypotheses around the ways we may acquire them. The human microbiome. I'm sure this is a term most of you are familiar with. But did you know that it has recently been reported that more than half of your body is non-human? According to Professor Rob Knight from the University of California, San Diego, approximately 43% of our body's total cell count is human, while the rest are microscopic colonists. But where do these microorganisms come from? Well, it has been thought that newborns are born completely germ-free and that the initial colonization of the newborn occurs during the process of delivery. Conventionally, the process of delivery has been considered the primary determinant of the infant gastrointestinal bacterial profiles early in life. A number of studies using 16S or RNA gene sequencing have shown that infants born vaginally acquire a microbiome that resembles that of the mother's vagina, while the microbiota of infants born by caesarean section are similar to the mother's skin. However, recent studies, a number of which used 16S or RNA sequencing, have provided evidence for even earlier colonization, also referred to as in utero colonization. In support of this, bacteria have been identified from previously considered sterile sites such as placenta, amniotic fluid and cord blood, as well as the newborn's meconium, which is the first stool sample passed by the newborn. And to better understand how in utero colonization may occur, a number of hypotheses have been generated. One of which suggests that paternal vaginal microbiota may ascend into amniotic fluid, Another hypothesis suggests that the external gut microbiota are taken up by dendritic cells and then transferred transplacentally to the fetus. But despite the contribution that 16S sequencing technology has made to better understand how we acquire our microbes, this technique, as any other, is not without its own limitations. For example, Lauder and colleagues compared bacterial profiles from vaginal swabs, saliva, and placenta, and found differences in bacterial profiles sequenced from these specimens. However, when comparing these bacterial profiles to that sequenced from negative controls, they found that placental bacterial profiles resembled that of negative controls. These findings indicate that 16S or RNA gene sequencing study designs should be conducted with care and that appropriate sequencing controls need to be included. However, despite the studies showing a cause for concern when using 16S or RNA gene sequencing to study low biomass samples such as placenta, others have shown that when pregnant mothers received probiotics compared to placebo controls, bacterial alterations were detected in placenta as well as the infant's meconium. These findings support the notion of in utero colonization introduced by Jimenez in 2005, where a genetically labeled enterococcus strain could be isolated from meconium sampled from the offspring mice after orally inoculating pregnant mice. Of note, no labelled bacteria were found in the uninoculated control group. So in summary, we are more microbes than human. Studies using 16S or RNA sequencing technology have shown that we may acquire our microbes during the process of delivery and that profiles may be dependent on delivery mode. In addition, 
Studies, which also include studies using 16S technology, have recently reported that in utero colonization may occur prior to colonization during the process of delivery. And finally, studies investigating sample sites such as placental samples, cord blood, and amniotic fluid, which are all regarded as low biomass specimens, need to have optimal study designs and sequencing controls in place. So that brings me to the end of Module 2, Part 1, focusing on how we acquire our microbes. Please stay tuned for part two of module two.